Chip 39 is rolling out soon. Booster 19 is nearly complete. Pad 2 is days away from static fire tests. But while everyone's watching Flight 12 prep, Elon just dropped a bombshell that changes everything. SpaceX is targeting a 2026 IPO that could value the company at $1.5 trillion. Not just for rockets, but for something nobody saw coming. The plan? Launch AI computing platforms into orbit, power them with solar energy, connect them through Starlink, and generate massive continuous revenue that doesn't rely on governments or launch schedules. Can this actually fund an entire Mars colony? Let me start with what's happening on the ground in South Texas, because this tells you everything about where SpaceX is headed. Pad 1 is being completely torn apart. Crews are jackhammering the massive water-cooled steel plate, hauling out concrete and rebar like they're erasing the past. The old tank farm is gone, shipped to Brownsville Port. What does this level of demolition tell you about SpaceX's confidence in their next-generation design? Here's what most people miss. They're not just fixing Pad 1, they're rebuilding it from scratch for Starship of 3. The chopsticks have been cut shorter and capped to match Pad 2's configuration. The flame trench is being completely redesigned. This isn't maintenance. This is SpaceX admitting their original design was a prototype, and now they're building the real thing. How many companies have the guts to destroy their working infrastructure because they know they can do better? Meanwhile, Pad 2 is days away from going operational. The launch mount is wrapped in scaffolding for final outfitting. Engineers just tested the hold-down arm protective doors, the components that have to survive the acoustic hell of 33 Raptor engines firing simultaneously. But here's the technical leap that matters. Pad 2 uses two dedicated booster quick disconnects, one for methane and one for liquid oxygen, instead of Pad 1's single connection point. This isn't just an upgrade. This is SpaceX eliminating single points of failure in their propellant loading system. And you can already see the matching interface plates on Booster 19's engine section. The hardware is evolving together. The ship quick disconnect arm is fully installed with fluid and power lines. The deluge system has been tested multiple times through the flame trench, far more extensively than Pad 1 ever was. The entire top deck features water dispersion systems that Pad 1 never had. SpaceX learned from every concrete chunk that flew during early launches, and now they're over-engineering the solution. Is this what it looks like when a company stops testing and starts operating? Now let's talk about the vehicles themselves. Ship 39 was hooked up for lifting on December 11th. Booster 19 is nearly complete and waiting for Pad 2 to finish, so static fire testing can begin. SpaceX is moving faster than their own infrastructure can keep up. They're building rockets faster than they can build launch pads. Think about that. The bottleneck isn't engineering anymore. It's concrete and steel. But here's where the story gets bigger than rockets. SpaceX is also constructing a massive air separation unit at Starbase to produce liquid oxygen, nitrogen and argon on site. Right now, it takes 230 tanker trucks to fuel a single Starship stack. The booster burns through 28.5 tons of propellant per second. The ship adds another 5 tons per second. You can't support high launch cadence by driving trucks down Highway 4. The ASU is SpaceX, admitting that Starbase is transitioning from a test site to a production spaceport. How many launches are they planning if they need industrial-scale propellant production? Now, let's talk about the part nobody saw coming. SpaceX has stayed private for over 20 years. Elon has been clear about why quarterly earnings reports destroy long-term thinking. Wall Street wants profit. Mars doesn't generate profit. But something changed. 
SpaceX is reportedly targeting a 2026 IPO that could raise $25 to $30 billion and value the company between $800 billion and $1.5 trillion. That's not rocket company valuation. That's civilization-scale capital. Here's the problem they're solving. A self-sustaining Mars colony doesn't cost billions. It costs hundreds of billions, maybe trillions over decades. Governments will help with early missions, but they won't fund a permanent off-world civilization forever. Political priorities change. Budgets get cut. Mars needs a revenue stream that's massive, continuous, and completely independent of government contracts or launch schedules. Rockets alone can't provide that. There aren't enough customers. So what's the answer? Space-based AI computing. The concept is almost absurdly simple. Launch AI-optimized computing platforms into orbit. Power them continuously with solar energy. Connect them through Starlink's existing satellite network. Sell AI inference processing and data services globally. Orbit becomes the ultimate data center location because it doesn't have the constraints Earth does. No power grid limits, no cooling problems, no land costs, no zoning regulations. And AI demand is exploding right now while terrestrial data centers are running into physical limits. This isn't science fiction, it's logistics. Starship will deliver hundreds of tons to orbit at dramatically lower cost than anything that's ever existed. Starlink already operates the largest satellite network ever built, thanks to Falcon 9's reliability. AI workloads don't care where the hardware physically sits, as long as it's connected and powered. Put those three elements together and suddenly, low Earth orbit becomes economically productive in a way it's never been before. Can SpaceX create a revenue stream that rivals Starlink's $15 billion annually? But here's the part that makes this brilliant. A Mars colony has to be energy independent, highly automated, and AI assisted by necessity. You can't wait 20 minutes for Earth to answer a question when your habitat is losing pressure. The same technologies required to run AI computing in space, autonomous systems, distributed power, AI decision-making with minimal latency, are exactly the technologies needed to survive on Mars. Revenue from orbital AI computing doesn't just pay for Mars. It builds the operational blueprint for the colony. Look at the flywheel Elon is creating. The IPO provides massive capital. That capital funds Starship production, Starlink expansion, and orbital AI infrastructure. AI computing generates continuous high-margin revenue that doesn't depend on launch cadence, that revenue funds Mars infrastructure without constant fundraising or dependence on NASA's budget cycles. At that point, Mars stops being a cost center and becomes a new branch of human civilization with its own economic foundation. Is this the moment Earth's AI economy begins financing humanity's first permanent settlement on another planet? Let's talk about what else happened in space this week, because context matters. United Launch Alliance successfully launched an Atlas V rocket in its most powerful 551 configuration on Tuesday. The payload was 27 Amazon broadband satellites for their constellation, previously known as Project Kuiper. Amazon now has 180 satellites in orbit across seven missions, working toward a planned constellation of 3,200 satellites. That's direct competition with Starlink, and they're using Atlas V because their own launch vehicles aren't ready yet. But here's the thing. Atlas V only has 10 launches left before retirement. ULA is transitioning to Vulcan, which is still working through certification. Meanwhile, SpaceX is preparing to launch Starships Weekly. The gap is widening. NASA's Johnson Space Center just celebrated 25 years of continuous human presence aboard the International Space Station. Since November 2nd, 2,000 more than 290 people from 26 countries have lived and worked in orbit. 
The ISS represents humanity's capacity for international cooperation, but it's also aging infrastructure. NASA is already planning for commercial space stations to replace it. SpaceX's Starship could launch an entire space station in a single flight. How long before the ISS feels like the space shuttle? Incredible for its time, but outpaced by what comes next. Russia's space program continues struggling. Roscosmos delayed the launch of Electro L No. 5, a weather satellite, after discovering what they called a local discrepancy in the Proton M rocket's upper stage during pre launch checks. The Proton M has about a 90% success rate across 115 launches. Compare that to Atlas V's perfect record across a similar number of flights. Russian space engineering was once the standard. Now they're fighting to maintain reliability while SpaceX is redefining what's possible. Rocket Lab launched their 19th mission of 2025 from New Zealand on December 13th, exceeding their previous annual record of 16 launches set in 2024. The mission carried eight Japanese technology demonstrations to sun-synchronous orbit, including a drag sail designed to help with deorbiting and mitigate space debris. This was Rocket Lab's first mission, contracted directly with JAXA, with another scheduled for early 2026. Peter Beck's team is proving that small launch vehicles have a sustainable business model. They're not competing with Starship. They're serving a different market entirely. Can the space industry support multiple successful launch providers with completely different approaches? So here's what it all comes down to. Flight 12 isn't just another test. Ship 39 rolling out. Booster 19 nearly complete. Pad two days from static fires. These are the visible pieces of something much bigger. SpaceX is rebuilding Starbase from the ground up because they know what's coming. Higher launch cadence, version 3 hardware, industrial-scale propellant production. This is what infrastructure looks like when you're preparing for weekly launches, not monthly ones. But the $1.5 trillion IPO plan changes the entire equation. Space-based AI computing powered by Starlink and delivered by Starship creates a revenue stream that doesn't depend on government contracts or satellite deployment schedules. It generates continuous income while simultaneously developing the exact technologies needed for Mars. Autonomous systems, distributed power, AI decision-making without Earth in the loop. Elon isn't just funding a Mars colony. He's building an economic engine that makes the colony inevitable. This is how you finance civilization-scale projects. Not with flags and speeches, but with compute cycles, solar panels, and orbital infrastructure that pays for itself. The 2026 IPO isn't about making SpaceX a publicly traded company. It's about unlocking the capital to turn Mars from a cost center into humanity's next home. What do you think? Can space-based AI actually generate enough revenue to fund a Mars colony? Drop your thoughts in the comments. If this breakdown gave you a new perspective on SpaceX's strategy, hit that like button and subscribe to New Space Review so you don't miss what happens next. This community is what keeps us digging deeper into the stories that matter. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.